Hey guys, welcome to Dream Framer Photography. Today I'm gonna give you seven tips to take great food photos. Food was always an interesting subject in stock photography, so much that some stock photographers base most of their career on taking just food photos. If you're interested in selling photos online, subscribe to my channel and I promise I'll teach you everything you need to know to start with this business. Also, if you learned something new from this video, give it a like and leave me a comment if you have any questions. Now let's move to those tips that I wanted to share with you. The tips that will help you create better food photos. Tip number one, use natural light. You don't need expensive lights to create great food photos. What you need is just the window and indirect sunlight. Even better if the weather is cloudy, or if it's not cloudy, it's still okay if the sunlight doesn't go directly through the window and falls on the food to create harsh shadows. If that's the case, you will need a white tablecloth or white bed sheet to cover the window and create a diffuse, nice light source. If you need some additional light on the opposite side of the window, use some white surface to reflect the light from the window and try to avoid mixing of natural light and artificial light. In portrait photography that could look interesting, but in food photography not so much. Tip number two, food needs to look nice. That one is very simple. Food needs to look nice and fresh and appealing. And if it doesn't, you're not gonna be able to do much during the editing or you're gonna spend too much time fixing it. Inspect the food closely before you start taking photos and remove any let's say rotten berries or anything like that. Tip number three, use a nice background. I'm pretty sure you have a bunch of tablecloths in the house, but aside from tablecloths, you can use other surfaces and what works especially well is the wood. The wood is a natural material. It comes into various colors and shades. It's pretty cheap, it's easy to obtain, and you don't really need much to fill in the frame. You can buy wooden planks and combine them, for example. Tip number four, create a nice arrangement. This has a lot to do with photo composition and I already created a video on that subject. If you wanna watch the video and I advise you to do it, click on the card that showed up now on this video or follow the link in the description below. Aside from understanding photo composition, it's very important to go to any of the stock photo websites, search for food photos and get some ideas from there. Tip number five, adjust your camera settings. Three most important camera settings are ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. ISO is camera sensitivity to the light, and it's represented by a number. The higher the number, the higher the sensitivity to the light. This means that if you set your ISO number to a very high value, you're gonna be able to take pictures in very low light conditions. However, this has one drawback. The higher the ISO number, the more noise you're gonna have in the photo. The noise is like graininess. So your goal should be to keep the ISO value to the lowest possible level in order to keep the noise at the lowest possible level as well. And now you're gonna ask me, yeah, but if I do that, then my photo might be underexposed, which is true. Well, that's where the second and third camera settings come to play, shutter speed and aperture. Shutter speed shows you how long the sensor is exposed to the light. The lower the speed, the longer the exposure. So if you use low ISO value and your sensor is not really sensitive to light, you can compensate that by lowering the shutter speed. That way more light will come to the sensor and the image will be correctly exposed. There is one thing that you need to know before you start using low shutter speed. You need to fix your camera to something sturdy or maybe use a tripod because if your hands are shaking, that will be visible in the photo. The photo will be blurry. The third setting is the aperture. The aperture is basically the opening in the lens that lets light go through, and that opening is adjustable. The symbol for the aperture is F, and then after that F, we have a number. That number shows us how big the aperture actually is at the moment. There is one thing about this number that confuses many beginners. You would expect, logically, that if you have a high aperture number, that means that the aperture is bigger, while it's actually the opposite. Low aperture number tells us that the aperture is bigger, and 
high aperture number tells us that the aperture is smaller. Now, to expose your photo correctly, you have to combine these three settings, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. If you can afford to use higher ISO value, you can use high shutter speed and small aperture. Or if you have to keep your ISO value to very low, then you have to use slower shutter speed and bigger aperture. There is one very important thing that I have to tell you, and it's related only to the aperture. If you take two photos of the same scene with different aperture values, these photos will not look the same, and that's because more or less in these photos will be in focus. Let me explain. If the aperture is very small, most of the objects in the scene will be in focus, and that's because the light will go through a very small hole in the lens and create a very sharp image on the sensor. It's the opposite if you use bigger aperture. The bigger the aperture, the less of the objects in the scene will be in focus. This effect is called depth of field, and we can see it here on this example. Let's say this is a photo taken with a small aperture, and this is the same photo taken with a big aperture. Tip number six, try different angles. As always, experiment with angles. Start directly above, and then change the angle. If your food is not flat, like let's say pizza, you can try taking photos from very low angle, like this, for example. And finally, tip number seven, keep the surfaces clean. The background needs to be clean. The dishes need to be clean. The food needs to be clean. You will be surprised what you can see when you zoom in. You can see the fingerprints, you can see the dust, and I don't even want to mention the hair. Nobody wants to see that in the food, okay? So if you don't want to spend hours cleaning up the mess in Photoshop, clean it up before the photo shoot. Just wanted to mention one more thing. If you're planning on using Photoshop, please consider joining through my affiliate link. I posted it in the description of this video. That way you're going to support me and my channel. That was all for today, guys. See you next week. Bye.